today we're going to be making lemon meringue pie. So this is a high skill dish because you make pastry, you make a filling and then you make meringue as well and it also looks awesome. You can do it in pieces or individual tarts as well. So what you need for the first part of this um, is you're going to make the base firstly. So you need some cold butter and some plain flour. So you need 50 grams of butter and 100 grams of flour, which is your pastry ratio. So two parts flour to one part butter, and you need to make sure it is cold. So the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna get your equipment out. You need a bowl to make your pastry in. You need a jug with some cold water and a tablespoon. You need some baking beans. If you don't have baking beans, you can use rice, chickpeas or pasta. You need a tart tin and you need some baking paper to line it as well for your blind baking. And then you'll want a knife to cut up the butter and you'll want a fork to prick the bottom of the tart. Okay, after you've got all your equipment, the first thing you're gonna do is turn your oven on to 200 Celsius to get it ready for your pastry. You will also need a sieve. So the first thing you're going to do is sieve your flour into the into the mixing bowl. And then you're going to add your cold butter. Now you don't want to handle this butter very much, so chop it up into little cubes, just in your bowl with a knife, a table knife, just chop it into small chunks. This makes it much easier to rub in. And your chunks want to be about that big, just small, about a centimetre big. And then with this, you only want to see flour on your fingertips. So then you're gonna get the flour and you're gonna rub it in. It has to be hard butter or baking fat. You can use a mixture of butter and lard if you'd like, but it cannot be margarine or spreadable um, like butters. It's got to be solid and you only want to get flour on your fingertips because the palm of your hands is the hottest part here and it will melt the butter. This will make your pastry short and yummy. Okay, after a while, you should begin to look like breadcrumbs and once it begins to look like breadcrumbs, that's when it's nearly perfect. Give the ball a shake and any lumps, big lumps will come to the top which you can rub in. Okay, once you've got it looking like lovely breadcrumbs, you're then gonna add one tablespoon of cold water. The reason you add cold water is so it doesn't melt the butter and you want just one tablespoon. So pop one tablespoon in like that. And then, and then you're gonna use a palette knife or a table knife to mix it just to get it started. So just mix it around and this cuts through it. Once you've done that, you're then gonna put your hands in to bring it together and you want it to form a, um, a nice round ball. So just with the turning edge of your bowl like this and you're just gently squeezing it to come together. One tablespoon of water should be perfect. Don't overwork it, just so it comes together. Once it's all come together and you've got a nice round, um, small ball, you're then gonna put it in cling film and put it into the fridge to rest whilst you wash up the bowl. You should let it rest for longer, but obviously we won't have time in an hour's lesson. So just wrap it in cling film and put it in the fridge whilst you wash up your bowl. Okay, after you've washed up your bowl and your pastry has rested, you're then gonna need, I forgot to put at the beginning, um, a rolling pin and a flour dredger. So you're gonna need to put a little bit of flour, not much, just a sprinkle to stop it from sticking on your work surface and a little bit on your rolling pin. Then with your pastry, gently you're gonna work with it. So you want to push it down and you want to keep it in a circle. So you're gonna push it down and you want to gently roll it a little bit 
and turn. This stops it from sticking to your table and your rolling pin, and it also stretches the fibers in different directions. And then if it's starting to crack in your sides, just go back round again. So roll a little bit and turn. And you're gonna keep doing this until it's big enough for your dish. Just keep pushing it so your sides don't get cracked. And you wanna try and keep it round as your tart tin is going to be round, roll and turn. If it gets a little bit sticky, just put a bit more flour on your rolling pin. Make sure there's no bits on your rolling pin that it hasn't got stuck because those will cause it to get dense. Roll and turn. And you're doing this so all the fibres are going different ways. You put it in the fridge to rest so when you cook it, it doesn't like bounce in. It's rested so it's not under stress. Roll and turn. And you want to keep going till it's big enough for your tart tin and to come up the side. See, it's not big enough yet. So now I can see that my sides are gonna go up around the edge of my tart tin, it's the right shape. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to Get my rolling pin and I'm going to roll up the pastry in it. So this gently, rather than picking it up, it will crack. So you roll it up in your rolling pin like that. See? And then get your tin and you're going to gently pop it over the top. Like that. Then what you want to do is pick up your sides. Don't just get your hand and slap it down. You want to pick up your sides and so it comes into the bottom. So gently pick up the sides. If it cracks, don't worry too much. So pick it up and it comes into the bottom. And then you want to just make sure it goes round to the edges. If you get a little crack, you can always Use a bit of pastry to refill it. So push it down. Can you see how I'm not just pushing it? I'm making sure it's at the bottom of the tin as well. You can then, if your tart tin has got a sharp top like this one, you can then get your rolling pin and roll it over the top. If not, you can use a... Um, knife to do it, to cut it off. So you just get your rolling pin and literally roll and this cuts off your top. Okay and then if you had time you would then put this back in the fridge, you would cover it and leave it to rest for at least half an hour. So if you were to do it in your food exam you could do that. We don't have time in the one hour lesson, so you're gonna get a fork and you're gonna just put a couple of holes in the bottom and this will stop the pastry from rising. Just like that, just a few holes to stop it from rising up. And then you're gonna get your piece of paper to make it easier, front it off like that. And then you're gonna gently Pop it on top. Then you're going to get your beans or your pasta or your chickpeas, and this just helps to evenly cook it, and it also weighs the pastry down. It stops it from rising, which you don't want to obviously because you're going to put your filling in the next lesson, like that. And then you're going to put this in the oven for 10 minutes. And once that's in the oven, you're then going to wash off. So once it's been in the oven for about 15 minutes, you should see that it's gone a nice uh, light golden brown. And what you're gonna do is be really careful, don't touch these beans as they conduct the heat. That's what helps them cook, so it spreads the heat evenly. You're gonna lift up your pastry. If you're a little bit worried about it, ask your teacher to do it for you. And then just pour them back in. 
Now you see with this, it's shrunk a little bit because I didn't leave it to rest for a very long time. But you can see it's a nice golden brown, light golden brown. And then all you're going to do is you're going to write your name on a piece of baking paper, pop it on and you're going to leave it there for the next lesson.